And so they sent me, um, Miss Day, they sent me a notice on Friday that I could give again now. <laughs> April 13th. Huh? April 13th. Yeah, I'll mark it on my calendar. Um, we're just going to have to pray that nobody gives me gifts between now and then. All right. <laughs> all right. Anyway, all right. So every Sunday evening, parents, and for those that have young kids, at 5 p.m. in the Spiritual Life Building, they will be served a meal. Uh, they will do their Bible studies. They will have game time. They will have, um, I, I'm telling you, you just have to bring them, okay? Um, and uh, that's every Sunday evening at 5 in the Spiritual Life Building. Um, on the 18th, uh, the men's prayer breakfast is uh, going to be happening again. Men come um, 8 a.m. Uh, we normally have a great crowd. We would love to see it grow this year. So um, uh, you pray about it. And you think about it. And, and you do what God leads you to do, okay? But I promise you, you will not be disappointed um, if you come. Ladies Auxiliary will be meeting that Saturday morning of the 18th also at 9 a.m. in the uh, library. Uh, ladies, same thing. Uh, come and be a part of it. Um, we're trying this year to get uh, both groups. Uh, uh, well, we're just trying to, get a, we're trying to get the church active, okay? Uh, sharing Jesus with the community around us. So come and be a part of the things that are going to be going on. Um, you'll be getting them as they come out. Uh, the 26th in the evening service, the uh, Social Security boys will be with us. Invite someone to come with you. I said the last time, said invite them to come to Sunday school and church. Let them come with you Sunday school and church. Take them out to eat lunch. Don't let them out of your sight. Give them a chair to sleep in at your house. Take their nap in and then bring them back at 6 p.m. Come and join us. Uh, we have a, a, a great lineup of groups that are going to be here on fourth Sunday night with us this year. Uh, looking so forward to it, the Social Security boys are going to kick it off. And I know you all know them. Um, a lot of them, several of them, for right around the Clayton area. He invites somebody to come be with you. Freedom from bondage every Tuesday evening in the Spiritual Life Building, 630. Uh, Miss Tracy and the group would love to have you come join them. Whatever your struggles is, whatever you need, if you just need somebody to talk to or you just, you're curious, you want to go listen, go sit down and listen. They'll let you drag up a chair and, um, and, and listen. It may just be something that God has provided so that you can have a place. We all need those to talk to. And we find out a lot of times. See, we think we're, you've heard me preach it now. 
We think we're sailing in our own little boat and there ain't nobody in our boat with us. Well, you're wrong. Somebody's in that boat. Somebody else is going through what you're going through. Somebody that may be sitting in that group has been through and been delivered by the grace of God and the blood of Jesus Christ from what you're going through. So come and give it a shot. 6.30 in the Spiritual Life Building every Tuesday evening. On Wednesday morning, for those ladies that can, the ladies' prayer group, they meet in the Sunshine Classroom. They have a uh, Bible study and prayer time and... Um, Huh? A good time in the Lord. Okay, all right. Just check it. Amen. All right. Don't forget the cam needs. They're on the, uh, on the sheets. Uh, and also, please don't forget the blessing box. Uh, it is still uh, going rapidly. Um, there are many that are still using it. And it has been a blessing to the community and to the people around us. Um, and uh, again, I, I remind you, um, we're not here to determine who God does that, okay? We're just to be obedient and keep it there for them um, to meet their needs. Uh, so uh, keep those things in mind. Any other announcements this morning? Yes. One thing, I just want to remind people that with the auxiliary, there's not an age thing on that. It's just teenagers. <clears throat> That's the same thing with the men's group, um, you know. Um, uh, so come and uh, come and be a part of both of them. Um, you will be blessed by it. Anything else? your heart, Miss Ellen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, we're happy you're here. Amen. Amen. God gets the glory. Amen. All right. But remember, Miss Ellen, in your prayers as we begin our prayer time, uh, Brother John Hebert, uh, Tim and Lois, uh, the barbershop list, Miss Joyce, uh, continue to remember her. Miss Sue, continue to remember her. Uh, Brother Earl, continue to remember him in your prayers. Um, so many right now upon our prayer list. Uh, continue to remember Rick Benson in your prayers. Uh, Brother Jerry uh, Blaylock, uh, or Johnny Blaylock, remember him. Brother Jerry Blaylock, his brother. Also, uh, Miss Rennell, continue to remember Miss Rennell. Miss Rennell not here. You know Miss Rennell's not here. She's struggling. Um, so uh, remember Miss Rennell in your prayers. Uh, Miss Lib, uh, Miss Marie Dupree, remember Miss Marie uh, in your prayers also. Uh, of course, all of those that have lost loved ones, Nancy. Continue to remember Nancy and, uh, of course, um, her co-workers' family, the Gentry family. Remember them. 
uh, Miss Annie Ruth Ford. Um, um, continue to remember uh, Brother John Spencer and his wife, Miss Lily, Mr. Dalen. Uh, continue to remember M Nicole uh, in your prayers. Um, Nicole had a list of, um, of, of items today, so just remember Nicole in your prayers. Um, continue to remember uh, Miss Betty Rochelle. Uh, we were talking about her yesterday. Uh, continue to remember uh, um, all of these, all the families of those that have lost loved ones. Miss Jean's family, uh, uh, the Bun family. Um, there's just so many that have lost loved ones, and uh, let's continue to remember them. Are there any others at this time, Brother Jeff? Miss. Yeah. The cards and flowers and calls that we've received and, uh, during the passing of my father. He went like I'm sure all of us would desire to go. He was unconscious and and just went off in his in that sleep. And uh, he struggled for the last few months and uh, but and he didn't want any contact with others at that point. So uh, uh, if if we if we mention you know. He's not up to visitors and things like that. It was kind of on his uh, right. his request. Uh, he was struggling to talk and, and other problems. But I just wanted to thank everyone that uh, for all that you've done for us and you continue to pray for our family. I appreciate it. Thank you. Miss. We heard from Fred Baker. He is doing much better. Praise, Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. A great news. Uh, but let's continue to remember Brother Fred. Good to see Brother David with us this morning. Thank you all very much. I'm glad to be back. First off, i got a praise. Uh, amen. I started talking to my daughter again for the first time in a year. Uh, amen. It's been a long time. But uh, i got two prayer requests. One, I'm still dealing with this tension nerve and going down my arm and everything. Amen. But I was also let go from my job for something I didn't do. So I really need... Okay. God's job for me here in the next, hopefully, the next couple of days. Okay, you know, all right. Up, but I just know God, that's not where I was supposed to be, so I yeah. really have something for me. I just want to pray as I Amen. Know, that door for me. Amen. Amen. Miss Linda. Um, Johnny Blaylock, brother. Uh, they uh, had him out of the hospital, but didn't have nowhere to go. So, okay. um, Johnny and Gladys took him in. Okay. And um, just really pray for them. And okay. Johnny, now they put him on oxygen. Okay. And his brother's on oxygen. So okay. pray for that family. Okay. I have a praise report. I missed Come on. Cindy, but my sisters and I had a wonderful time. I really didn't tell the truth. I really didn't think about y'all, but I did pray for you. <laughs> 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 Amen. Amen. Hey, I like it. I like it. Amen. Tracy. Stanley, I wanted to thank everyone for praying for Keenan. He got to Fort Jackson, South Carolina safe. Um, he is now in basic training, and um, y'all just pray for his protection. But I will have an address for you guys um, Monday. Okay. Um, y'all send him plenty of stuff because I'm sure they'll make him do plenty of push ups. He'll be strong when he comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Any others? I'm sure I would Any others this morning? I remember my sister. She has a good day and a bad day, but she's still hanging in there. Okay. Uh, Nancy's other co worker, Cindy Weeks, uh, continue to remember her, please, in your prayers. Uh, any others? We've got a praise. Go ahead. Uh, my wife had an ultrasound uh, to look at something she was concerned about and came out normal. So good. Thank you. Yeah. God is good. And all the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. All right. Any others? It's good to see Abigail. Of course, Christina, continue to remember her. That back hasn't gone away, but uh, plowing through, aren't you, girl? Yeah, there you go. Amen. Remember my two sisters. Okay, all right. Remember those. Anyone else? Country, our leaders. Let's remember all of those that serve our country. Let's remember all of those that serve our communities um, in whatever uh, capacity that is. Let's remember them in our prayers. 
Uh, don't forget, we're commanded to pray one for another. Amen. Amen. Uh, pray for the churches and the pastors. Pray for all of those that are serving in the mission fields, uh, all to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Tim Johnson, would you take these to the Lord for us, please? Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you so humbly this morning, Lord, just to say thank you, Jesus, for saving our wretched soldiers. Thank you for your hand of protection that you placed upon us, people. Father, we, we think about the people and we pray a blessing upon Turkey and Syria and all the rescuers that are over there trying to save what's left of those countries where they devastation of the earthquakes have been. Father, we pray for them. We pray so deeply for them. Father, I can't imagine the devastation. Father, we thank you for our EMS and our fire and our rescue and all of our all of our people that are here to keep us safe. Father, we're such a blessed country that we just don't understand. Father, thank you for our military. Keep your hand upon them. Just keep Keenan safe from harm's yes, way yes. and let him learn what you want him to learn, Lord, yes. in basic training, Lord. It's it's a blessing to know that we ask to have our young people willing to serve in our yes. like that. Thank you for that, oh God. Yes. Father, so many names have been mentioned this morning that we can't name them all in this prayer, but Lord, you knew them before we even thought of that. Yes. And we're just so blessed by that, Father. Thank you. Touch them. As each person needs you, Father, you know their needs. Father, we we thank you that you bless Brother Jeff and Renee and all those others, Tony and his family, as they've lost a loved one. Father, just continue to bless them, give them the strength they need to carry on. With them. Peace and the understanding they need. Father, bless our pastor today as he he leads this uh, sermon to come up. Well, let it be the one you would have us to hear. Let him deliver it in the way you want him to deliver it. And Father, we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Let's stand and sing. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
We need a light that flashes back there. There might be one right here. Go ahead and turn. Genesis 18. When you're there, say amen. amen. All right. Genesis 18, beginning in verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Her adventure. There be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for fifty righteous that are in the, are there therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall be five of the 50 righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak. Peradventure there shall be thirty found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will, per, I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went away as soon as he had left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you this morning, we ask you to lead, to guide, and direct the message that you have given, Lord. Let your words reign true, and Lord, most of all, let the Spirit of God lead in all that is said and done, and may the name of Jesus be magnified and glorified, for it is Jesus and Jesus alone that saves. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come into your house this morning and we call upon the Spirit of God to lead, guide, and direct as only you can. Now be with us, watch over us, and keep us as we expound upon your holy word under the leadership of the Spirit of God. Lead us, Lord, as only you can. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Title of the message today is Game On. Y'all know what today is, right? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's a day of the Lord, right? And they just put a football game on it. I know that there are many that have picked their sides. They are either for the Chiefs or for the Eagles. Game's on. People are excited today about a game that most of them are not going to see in person. They're going to watch it on TV. They're excited about who might win. And I promise you, if you ask somebody who's pulling for the Chiefs, the Chiefs are going to win. 
If you find somebody else that's pulling for the eagles, you're going to find out that the eagles are going to win. They've all picked their winners. My team's the best. See, Bob caught that one. Oh, no. No. But that's what we say and that's what we do and we get excited about these kind of things and, and people have shut down their whole day. They ain't even got out. They have not left the house yet. I met friends of mine on Saturday with carts full of chips and drinks, and I'm going, are you camping out? <laughs> it's like I'm calling for snow in North Carolina. You can't get a gallon of milk or a bread loaf of bread. Snow in North Carolina does not last more than a couple of days. <laughs> How many sandwiches are you going to eat? <laughs> but they get excited about things like this. But yet when you ask them, what did the preacher preach on Sunday morning? Genesis 18. <laughs> well, what was the message? He didn't like the Super Bowl. <laughs> no, I'll be like everybody else. So y'all got to watch the whole thing. I just go get the end so I know who won it and then I go to bed. <laughs> See, Will's with me up here. All right. <laughs> there you go. I'm with you, brother. But the thing about it is is that in our lives we get so tied up in the things of the world that we forget who we are. We forget what God has done and what he's doing. We, we make life a game. As a matter of fact, if you want to talk to people in society, they think of life as a game. It's who's got the most. I've had people tell me this. The winner of the game is who has the most when they die. Well, you don't have nothing when you die. So I guess you lose. Amen. But the thing about it is, is that we've made life a game, and it's not a game. We get excited about games. We get excited about basketball and baseball and football. And I still don't understand soccer, so I'm not even excited about even going by a soccer field. And I know nothing about cricket because I'm not from England. <laughs> I do like ice hockey every now and then after the fight. You know, you go, to a, you go to a hockey game and you really do. You go to the fight and hope that the hockey game breaks out. <laughs> but we've made life a game and it's not a game. There are winners and losers in life. But they're not winners and losers in the, in the, in the stance that the world takes. See, there are winners and losers in where we spend eternity. And the bad thing about it is, is that if we think about the world, we think about life that way, then what we lose is we lose the guidance of God and all of His infinite wisdom. Because you see, it's not us that knows who holds some, or what tomorrow holds. It's we know who holds tomorrow. And the scriptures that I read was nothing more than Abraham. Abraham was pleading for the lives of people. He cared even about the lost. Why do we not care about the lost? We can get excited about the things that are going on in the world, but we're not excited about what God can do in somebody's life. Game's on. Not the Super Bowl. Because you see, we do make everything a game in our lives. Because you see, 
we have a tendency sometimes to negotiate with God. Huh? You can say, well, not me, preacher. Um, the altar will be open in a little while. <laughs> you negotiate. When there's things that you feel like you really need or you really have to have or there's things going on in your life that are really dragging you down, you begin to bargain with God. You stop believing that He's able to do it. We all do it. We forget that He's able to do all things. And He'll meet our needs. But you know, the thing about it is, is we don't have to bargain for Him to meet them. We don't have to make deals with Him. Now, He'll deal with us to a point. He did with Abraham. He did with Abraham. He dealt with Abraham. He was tolerant of Abraham's. But Abraham wasn't being disrespectful to God. He wasn't shaking his fist at him and arguing with him. No, he was pleading for the lives of those in Sodom and Gomorrah, which was wretched and wicked. If there's just 50, are you really going to destroy the righteous with the unrighteous? Well, Scripture tells us that sometimes the righteous get caught up with the unrighteous. Woo. The difference is the direction you go. Huh? <laughs> if, I'm in the bad, if I'm in the wrong place on the highway at the right time and me and other folks die, the righteous are going to get caught up with the unrighteous. And there's no, there's no missing it. I mean, let's be realistic, okay? If there were any believers in these places, their warning from God was to leave. If we find ourselves in an unrighteous place, then our warning from God is to leave. To separate ourselves from all appearances of evil. To come out from amongst them and be separate. But you see, the thing about it is, is we get so called up in the game that we become arrogant as men. And the Scripture warns us not to do that. Abraham was not arrogant. But we become arrogant in our stance. The book of Galatians, in Galatians 6, 3, For if a man think himself to be something... When he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Don't think so highly of yourself. Oh, my team's going to beat your team. I'm going to win and you're going to lose. You see, the thing about it is, is that there is none greater than God. There is none of us greater than God. He gives us ability. He gives us ability, but it's a God-given ability. It's an ability that God gives to us. You see, the beauty of it is, and, and of course my problem with, 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 with the NFL is you pay way too much money for somebody to go out and chase a football 100 yards that way and 100 yards that way. I mean, it just don't make no sense to me. It does not make no sense to me. They say, well, I do it for the love of the game. No, you do it for the love of the money. It's not the love of the game. If it was not off the money, was not there, 90% of the NFL would quit. Because they don't like it. They, it's not about the game. It's about the money. And I'm not railing on that because sports are important. Sports teach structure. They teach dynamics. They teach how to work as a team. 
but they've been distorted by the world. Game is on, yeah. And life, it's just not a game. Because those that lose the game of life, those that lose that game, lose it forever. They lose it forever. It is an eternal loss. And Abraham didn't want anybody to lose. He didn't want a soul to be lost, not even the righteous. So he pleads with God. But our arrogance this day and time in the world that we live in says, I am somebody and I am something. And I'm great. Whether you believe me or not. In 1 Corinthians 8, 2, the apostle Paul writes, he says, if any man think that he knoweth anything, <laughs> uh-oh, he knoweth nothing, yet is he ought to, be, to know. In other words, if we think we know it, maybe we need to research it some more. Maybe we need to look into it some more. Maybe we need to pray over it some more because wisdom and knowledge does not come from with us. It does not come from Washington, D.C. No wisdom and knowledge at all in that place. But, amen. Yeah, Dan, I agree with you there, brother. But you see, the thing about it is, is that he says, if we think we know and we really don't know anything, we ought to look at it. If we want knowledge and wisdom, we need to look into who has wisdom and knowledge. Abraham, his concern was for others and and my thing, I guess the point is, is why is there not that much zeal, excitement, enthusiasm? Why is there not that much in Jesus? The wisdom of man. In 1 Corinthians 3, 19, again, the apostle Paul says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. <laughs> in other words, you can't fool God. You cannot fool God. Life's not that game that we all want to play. There are, not, there are winners and losers in it, but it's not financial. It's not with the things of the world. I had a friend of mine that told me one time, he says, the one with the most toys at the end wins. And I said, well, I'll then wait and get your toys. <laughs> <laughs> you collect all you want because you can't take them with you. But you see, when you read what Abraham was doing, Abraham, it was, it was a tennis match between him and God. God says, oh yeah, okay, if there's 50, I won't do it. Oh, if there's 45, I won't do it. Oh, if there's 30, I won't do it. Well, well, well what if there's 20? I won't do it. What if there's 10? Oh, now let me just go ahead and tell you, okay? The thing, the problem that we find whenever we start to use our wisdom as humans, as humanity, when we start to use our wisdom and we use it without God's input, then what happens is, is we become fools. We make ourselves to look like fools. Because you see, we need the wisdom of God. 
We need, in order, in order for us to win at life, in order for us to have eternal life, we need Jesus. The world needs Jesus. It don't need a football game. It don't need a baseball game. It don't need a basketball game. It don't need a soccer match. It doesn't need these things. They need Jesus. They all have a purpose and a place. And I know, I know, I know some great coaches that, that, that they use their faith as they lead a team. But you see, we live in a world that is about me, about the individual now. There are teams that depend on one player. If that one player don't show up, oh my God, we're going to lose. Well, if your team is dependent upon one player, then you're a team of one. And we don't need a team of one. We need a team that works together in unison. The body of Christ is supposed to be one mind and one body. That's what we're supposed to. We're supposed to work in unison through the guidance of the Holy Spirit to worship God, to praise Him, and to serve Him. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what God would have us to do. James says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally. In other words, he gives it freely. If you ask God, and see, and that's where we get off, is we stop trusting God and we go, oh, it's just part of life. It's just part of what we're doing. It's just part of the path we're on. But we begin to, in those moments, we begin to negotiate. Lord, if you'll just get me up from here, I'll go do whatever it is you want me to do. Lord, if you'll just get me moving, I'll go do whatever it is you want me to do. I'll go serve you. I'll go do this. I'll go do that. We begin to bargain with God. And once we forget in all of this and what Abraham was not acknowledging or did not acknowledge out loud was that God already knew how many righteous there were in Sodom. But he allowed Abraham to negotiate. He allowed because it had to be for God. It had to be uh, uplifting that Abraham even cared. So I ask you, in this thing that we're going through, life, do we care? Because you can take Sodom and Gomorrah now and you can put it on any nation in the world, including this one. Why should God tolerate any more? The beautiful thing is, is that the Scriptures tell us that the righteous, now those that believe, those that are, sell, that are saved and washed by the blood of Jesus, they won't have to endure the things to come. You see, what is the wisdom of God? Because see, that's what we need to remember is that God already knew he already knew how many there was in Lot's family in Sodom that were righteous. And he won't all of them. Huh? He already knew. Job said it this way in Job 36, 5, Behold, behold God is mighty. And he despises not anything. He is mighty in strength and in wisdom. He's a mighty God. Amen. He knows all things. He knows what we're thinking. He knows. I mean, I'll be honest. 
I don't mind being honest. I throw myself out there all the time anyway, right? On Monday morning, I won't real sure that I was even going to be alive Tuesday morning to do a funeral. Not that I was deathly sick, but in my, in, in my mind, that would have been a relief. We begin to negotiate. We begin to say, how am I supposed to do what it is that you've called me to do if I can't even stand up? And you know the beautiful thing about it is is that God never fails. And see, and the thing that I guess the message today is, is, is no matter what, you see, Joshua said, Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Whether it be the gods on the other side of the flood or whether it be the gods of the Canaanites, the Ammonites, the, all the other ites. <laughs> or, as he says, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. We're going to serve Jehovah God. Choose this day. You see, there are choices in life. We get excited about making choices over a football team. Rivalries, we get excited over it. There are families that will split tonight <laughs> over a football game. Afterwards, well, let's take it in the front yard. One on one, I'd beat you. Grow up. <laughs> Life is about living or dying. There is, there, there, if you want to live, then it's Jesus. If you want to live, there is no other way to live. It's not a game. God is not sitting up on the up on his throne up yonder gambling. He's up there going, I've give you your options. Now I'll support you in any option you choose. That's the loving father that he is. If you choose to go the way of the world, he'll say, I love you anyway, but go your way. The story of the prodigal son. That's what it says. That the son came and said, I want it. I want what is mine. I want mine. And the father said, okay. But the beauty about it is, is even when they choose not to, he does not stop loving them, and he's always waiting for them to come back. But he will not interject himself into our choices. We're not puppets on strings. He does not manipulate us. He guides us. He leads us. He loves us. He knows all things, 1 John 3.20. For if our heart condemn us, <laughs> God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Huh? He's greater. As I said, I'll go home tonight after service, and I'll go home and I'll fix me a sandwich and get me a drink, and I'll catch the last half. but I'm not going to forsake God for it. Because, you see, I understand in this world, I understand who wins. And I want others to understand who wins. It's not the Chiefs or the Eagles. One of them will come away Super Bowl champion. Okay? One of them will. 
And they'll get their millions and they'll get all of this and they'll get all of that and they'll get all the accolade of being a world champion. But my question to each and every one of them is, are you an heir to a kingdom or is this all you have? To you and to me and to all the world, are you an heir? Are you a child of God or is this all you have? Because if this is all you have and all you want, my heart breaks for you. Amen. Because God did not negotiate with nobody for your souls. He gave His only begotten Son because He so loved the world. And whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Because you see, the thing about it is, is that what Abraham... What Abraham did not acknowledge was and did not know at the time that there's victory in Jesus. God will be victorious. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. There's victory in Jesus. God wins. He never loses. He already knew when Abraham was bargaining for the lives of those, even the wicked, God already knew how many righteous there were. You see, God will allow us. He'll give us leeway to bargain. But in the end, He wins. He's never lost. He's never give up. And He's never quit. Huh? huh. A revelation... Chapter 15, verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Who wins? God wins. Who wins? The righteous win. Huh? End game. Every game comes to an end. Buzzer always sounds at the end, don't it? The end game. Revelation 21, verses 6 through 8. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him, that is a thirst, of a fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and the idolatries and, the, and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Brothers and sisters, that's where it ends at. Life is not a game that we're playing. God is not playing no games. Life is about life and death. 
I want everybody to be on the victorious side. I want everybody on the day that the trumpet sounds and the shout of the archangel happens. I want everybody to leap from their graves and leap from their seats and start singing victory in Jesus. Because that's the only place victory is found. We'll win some in this life, in the physical world, and we'll lose some. But ultimately, where are you at spiritually? Where are we at as a church spiritually? Because the only way we can exist in this world is that we all be on the same team. My prayer is, is that before the Lord returns is that all the churches will put down their doctrines and pick up their Bibles. Amen. I don't care which verse of Scripture you find to be your whatever. I find them from Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation 21. I find them all to be just as important as the one before and the one after. Back to the Word of God. Because that's the only way that we're victorious. And if you're waiting on the game, I hope you enjoy. I do. I didn't say I didn't like it. I just don't like what they get paid to do it. I don't like what they use their platforms for. I get a small platform, but I'm going to use it to God's ability to the best that He can. And that's what's important. We use what God gives us for His glory, and we're victorious because He won. God's already won it. He says, pick your team. Pick which side you're going to be on. For as for me and my family, we choose the Lord. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy. We come today thanking you for all that you do for us. We come thanking you for your many, many blessings. We come thanking you for your love and your grace. We thank you for mercy. That is, that is renewed every day when we ask you now to lead us, search our hearts, draw us closer to you. Lord, help us to be better. Help us to be better at what you've called us to be. Lord, I do pray that you would just lead, guide, and direct. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for these that have gathered here today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all that you do. Lord, may we, no matter where we are and what we do, may we always remember it is you we serve. And may we serve you to the very best of our ability each and every day. For it's in the name of the Lord Jesus we pray. Amen and amen.